93 years ago, the world was blessed with the first Laurel and Hardy film, called Putting Pants on Philip. It was the comedy duo's first film together as a team, even before they became a duo. Both actors had appeared in a huge number of films and were well known in Hollywood. They are considered one of the greatest comedy acts of all time. Here's their story. Stan Laurel. Stan Laurel was born in England to parents who worked in the theater. His mother died of a respiratory illness when he was 18 years old, and this broke the young man's heart. He never recovered from the grief of his mother's death. When he was 16 years old, he performed on a stage for the first time at the Panopticon in Glasgow, Scotland. Three years later, he was hired by Fred Carnot, one of Britain's biggest comedy in Sperio at the time. As a supporting actor, Carnot's troupe also included Charlie Chaplin. Laurel was Chaplin's understudy, and they both came to the United States from Britain on the same ship. He did some stage performances and films with the Australian vaudeville performer Mae Dallenberg for some time. When Laurel signed a contract with Joe Rock for 12 two real comedies, Rock said he didn't want Dalberg to act in any of the films because he thought her turbulent nature was getting in the way of Laurel's career. Rock paid her some cash and gave her a one-way ticket back to her home in Australia so she'd stop interfering with Laurel's work. A fun fact about Dalberg, she was the one who made Stan change his stage name from Stan Jefferson to Stan Laurel because she said Stan Jefferson had 13 letters in it, which made it an unlucky name. Laurel later married Lois Nelson but their marriage lasted only eight years. He married Virginia Ruth Rogers, but realized he was still in love with Nelson, so he divorced Rogers in 1937. Nelson told Laurel she didn't love him anymore. After another failed marriage, he finally married Ida Kitavi Raphael in 1946, who he remained with him until his death in 1965. After Laurel's contract ended with Joe Rock in 1925, he started working with Hall Roach Studios, where he met Oliver Hardy. Oliver Hardy. Hardy was born in Norville Hardy in Georgia. His father, Oliver Hardy, died a few months after he was born. Norville added Oliver to his name to pay tribute to his dead father. His mother, Emily Norville, took care of the family while managing hotels and boarding houses. Hardy also lost his brother in a swimming accident when he was a teenager. Hardy showed little to no interest in education in his adolescent years. He was sent to Georgia Military College when he was a child. From the beginning, he was interested in music and theater. When he ran away from a boarding school to go and sing with a theatrical group. His mother realized that he had knack for this and subsequently sent him to the music teacher Adolf Dam Peterson in Adela in Atlanta to study music and voice. He often skipped his music classes to sing at the Alcazar Theater. Hardy developed an interest in the new motion picture industry when he started working at the Motion Picture Theater, the Palace, in 1910. He was confident that he could do better than the actors he saw on the big screen. At the suggestion of a friend, he moved to Jacksonville in 1913, where he met his future wife, Madeline Slashin. He soon started making films for the Lubin studio. Owing to his huge size, he was mostly cast as the villain, but he also worked in comedy shorts. He made around 50 short films with Lubin and then moved to New York, where he made films for various studios from 1918 to 1923. He made over 40 films for Vitagraph. Hardy married Slashin when he was 21 years old. They married away from the Hardy's family because his mother opposed their marriage, due to Slashin being Jewish. The marriage didn't last long, and Hardy and Slashin got divorced in 1921. A few days after the divorce, Hardy married the actress Myrtle Reeves, but this marriage was also an unhappy one because Reeves was an alcoholic and she often had to stay in a sanitarium. They got divorced in 1940. Hardy started working with Hal Roach Studios in 1924, a year before Laurel joined the studio. Laurel and Hardy and their decline. When Laurel joined Hal Roach Studios, he couldn't act in their films because he had light blue eyes, which couldn't be photographed properly due to the limitations in film technology. He worked as a writer for a year at the studio and finally joined as an actor when panachromic film was invented. Laurel and Hardy soon started making films together, and the studio quickly realized that they were perfect together. As a comedy duo, they starred in 107 films. They were at the height of their popularity between the late 1920s and the mid-1940s. Even after the invention of sound in films, Laurel and Hardy mostly relied on visual humor, which is one of the biggest reasons why their transition from silent films to sound was so seamless. As the silent film era declined, so did many actors who were popular during it. 
but Laurel and Hardy only became more famous. In their shorts and films, they often had humorous arguments that didn't lead to any real progress. They would take a basic idea and it would evolve into multiple gags without any proper structure or narrative. Their comedy was often said to be surreal. Stan Laurel called this style of comedy white magic. Hal Roach made Laurel and Hardy shoot scenes in German, French, Italian, and Spanish, which probably explains why they were so popular all over the world. Roach would get tutors who would teach them their lines in different languages, and a different supporting cast would be hired for each language. Despite being so popular, they had financial troubles because of their contracts with Hal Roach. Hardy was always in need of money because of his addiction to gambling and alimony payments to his ex-wife. In the 1930s, Hal Roach ended Laurel's contract because of an argument they had. Laurel sued him, but the two soon found common ground and Laurel came back. The comedy duo performed some variety shows in England in 1947, and they also performed in front of King George and Queen Elizabeth in London. Due to the success of these shows, they toured the UK and Europe for the next seven years. Things started going downhill for Laurel and Hardy quickly after their first tour. Laurel discovered in the late 1940s that he had diabetes, so he told Hardy that he should start looking for solo projects. Hardy found acting work in some John Wayne and Bing Crosby films. Their last stage performance was at the Palace Theatre in 1954. They made an appearance on the live NBC TV program This Is Your Life in, in December 1954, after which they decided to start a TV show. Unfortunately, Laurel had a stroke in 1955, which caused the duo to cancel the TV show. Over a year later, Hardy had a heart attack and found himself unable to go back to acting. Hardy's doctor advised him to lose weight because it caused a lot of complications. He managed to lose over 150 pounds, but the change in his appearance wasn't welcomed by his friends and family. He took their criticism to heart. Hardy's house was sold to pay for his medical expenses. When he finally died in 1957, Laurel didn't attend his funeral because he was too ill. Many people said he was too close to Harvey, and his death broke him. He didn't perform in any film or on stage after Hardy died. Laurel spent the remaining eight years of his life replaying, replying to fans and anyone who wrote to him. He died of a heart attack in 1965. Many comedians, writers, and artists consider Laurel and Hardy the best comedy duo of all time. Do you remember watching any of their films or shorts when you were little? Let us know in the comments below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.